Hey guys, today we're gonna to be looking at Dark Angels and more specifically, the first company, Deathwing. Now, originally, I hadn't planned on doing this video for a couple more months, but due to all the love that the Dark Angels are getting because of the return of the Lion and everyone excited about that, I decided to move it a little bit forward for those of you who are painting up your death wings and are preparing at your Dark Angels and ready to have Lion L. Johnson lead them into battle. When I sat down and was trying to figure out a scheme for this, my first rule was it needs to be simple. I didn't want to do something complex. I wanted to find an easy way to paint up a lot of Deathwing Terminators, but still make it look good. So we're not going to go super in depth with the painting style in this one, but instead we're going to keep it simple. We're going to keep it easy and we're going to keep it looking good. Later on, I may do another video, maybe with the second unit of Blade Guard veterans that I, I'm going to need for my Dark Angels army. But uh, either way, we're going to do another video that goes a little bit more in depth into how to do a higher quality Deathwing armor for those of you that are like, I, I don't want something simple. I, I really want to put my love into my Deathwing style stuff, but that's not going to be for a while. This is just going to be a simple, easy and good looking Deathwing armor. I tried a lot of different ways in order to paint up Deathwing armor, uh, a lot of different recipes, a lot of different paints that went into it. And I finally settled on this and it was actually more by accident as I was painting and repainting models and trying to figure out exactly how I wanted to do it. Some of them, they look good, but they were too complicated. Others just didn't have a good bone looking feel to them. They didn't have that, that right color that you're looking for with Deathwing. Uh, but with this, it's so easy. This may be the easiest way you can possibly paint good looking Deathwing armor. So with all that in mind, we've got our wind condition set with fast, easy and good looking. We know what we're going for. Let's go ahead and jump to the painting. The armor, we start by basically painting the entire thing in birch. Uh, you could use a similar color from another range, whether that's in a rattle can or uh, by brush. I use an airbrush just to airbrush it on because it's just easier and faster. With our birch laid down the way we want it, we're just gonna take a skeleton horde and we're gonna cover the entirety of the armor with this. Now, we don't want it super thick. We wanna make sure we water this down. And what you can see that I'm doing on this pauldron here is I'm taking a damp brush and I'm moving the skeleton horde to where I want it to be. So on flatter or more raised edges, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that wet or that damp brush and I'm gonna wipe off a lot of it and push it into the recesses. This is gonna keep it from looking super dark in those brighter spots. It's gonna give you some natural highlights that are really easy to accomplish here. You can see it really well here on the backpack. We're gonna put on a good amount here onto the backpack and then with a damp brush, we're gonna come back over here in a moment and we're gonna move this to where we want it to be and we're gonna take it off of where we want highlights to appear. We're gonna come back to our birch in order to do some edge highlighting. It's just going to bring a little bit more depth and a little bit more light and variation to the armor. Obviously, you could just leave it how it is if you like that, but the birch just adds a little bit more to it and, and gives it that style that we think of when we think of 40K. Now, if you really wanted to push this a little bit further, you could take a white sands, would be the scale 75 color, or a ivory, something like that, and you could come back and do a more fine and uh, focused edge highlight, and that would make it look even better. That would add so much more depth. Thank you. 
we're gonna come in with this black forest green and we don't need a super great coverage because in a second, whenever we wash it down, we're gonna darken it up a bit with our wash and then that's gonna help create some color and give it some depth as well. But we do wanna make sure that we get good coverage. We wanna make sure that we don't have a whole lot of this light color shining through, through our paint, but it's not like you need it super opaque. The shade, we're just gonna come back with our Nolan Oil. We're gonna put this all over our green elements. It's going to deepen them, it's gonna darken them, it's gonna give that immediate shading, uh, which is what we want out of this. We're gonna come back with our Arati Green right over all of this. Now, I have not mixed this into the Black Forest Green. This is straight Arati Green. We wanna make sure though that we're not super heavy handed with it. We don't wanna cover everything. Uh, we wanna kinda of hit the edges and the places that we really want it to be brighter, um, but we don't wanna to be too heavy handed with this. You're gonna see here as I work on the tabard, one of the things that I do is I put the paint down and if I put too much down or sometimes I purposely put too much down in a certain area and then I just take my damp brush and I feather it out and I kind of move the paint around and thin it down so that it's smoother but I get it into where I want it to be. It kind of blends it into the previous color um, and it's, it's also a good way that if you do make a mistake, you do lay down too much paint, just to know that you come back with that damp brush and you just feather it out over a wider area and it's okay, you haven't made a critical mistake. Just remember that there is that back of the tabard that you can see as well, and so make sure that you don't forget to come back and add a little bit of color to that. You don't really need to focus on it because obviously it's the back and it doesn't matter a whole lot, but just don't completely forget about it or it's just gonna look plain and flat and it won't look good from the back. We're building up our Arati again here with a second go over, doing the exact same thing, just kind of feathering it out when we get a lot, not laying down a whole lot of paint, just slowly building up these colors. We're finally gonna come into our spring green and this is just gonna be for those edges that we really want to be brightest, that we really want to focus on and to be catching light with. For the leather, I wanted to do something unique. I didn't want it to have a brown that was gonna kind of fade into the armor, but I also didn't want it to have a black, which just would look flat. And I, I wanted something a little bit more interesting. So I went with this black leather. It's this nice uh, purplish burgundy color that is, I, I find it fun to work with. And we're gonna build it up actually with a gray color. We're gonna come over a second time to really make sure that we do get that opaque finish. We're not gonna wash it here as we go into our layers. What we're gonna do is we're gonna mix in our rainy gray with our black leather 
in a couple of different stages. And our goal here is to be very sketchy, is to not have a whole lot of uniform, just kind of come over, build up colors. Uh, we want it to look like leather. We want it to look a little bit natural. So like I said, very sketchy um, and, and don't worry too much about hitting specific areas. adding more rainy gray into our black leather and continuing to build up these colors. At the end, we're gonna come back with pure rainy gray after we've built up this color through a couple of different layers of adding more rainy gray into our black leather. And we're just gonna be very sketchy with it again, but we're just gonna kind of stipple along these edges, along these creases, uh, just trying to create a worn look. We want it to look more natural. We don't want it to look super uniform or anything like that. We're gonna add some scratch marks uh, basically all across it. Now make sure that your scratch marks don't all just go in the same direction or else it's, it's gonna look kind of odd if you do it that way. Finally, we're gonna come back with a mix of violet ink and sepia ink, and we're gonna wash all over this leather. Uh, this does a couple of things. It gives it an interesting color that uh, I really like, but also it gives it a little bit more of an oily look or texture to it that makes it sell much more as leather. For our steel, we're gonna do it with our dark aluminum that I talked about in a lot of other videos as to how much I like this color. Now we are painting the sword this because one of the things I wanted to do is move a little bit away from that power sword that you normally see in 40K and do more of a classical metallic knight sword for them. There's not a whole lot of steel parts on these guys. A vast majority of the metallics on them is actually gold. We're gonna wash the entirety of all these metal elements with our rattling grime. This is one of my favorite ways actually in order to wash steel colors, uh, to give them some really good color and to give them a really good feel. Um, it's not necessarily grimy per se, but it darkens them up and gives them a very worn look to it. Here you can kind of see what it looks like and see the difference in those metallics whenever it has that rattling grind dried on it. You'll notice that we didn't build up any highlights on our steel. We're gonna come back actually and we're gonna do that later because we're gonna use the same color as the final highlight for our gold. The only red details that I've chosen to put on this model are on the shield and are on his chest on his little uh, emblem that we're gonna paint on here. Now, I've painted each of my Blade Guard veterans with a different design on here. So the red, whether it's going horizontal or vertical or diagonal, uh, I've made it different. In order to create a, a white look, we're going with our Uthuang Gray onto this shield here. We 
we'll wash all of our reds, darkening them up, giving them some definition here with Nuln Oil. Moving on to our bold pyrrole red, we're just gonna come along these edges and it's not gonna be a super thin edge highlight here. We want it to actually be a little bit um, thicker, what people call a chunky edge highlight. And we're gonna come over this twice in order to make sure that we have uh, a good color to it. We don't need to lay it down super thick at first because we're gonna come back over it again and kind of make sure that we have those lines introduced well. Now, working with the shield on his chest, uh, I went back and forth between the Uthon and the reds as I was painting this up for that line. So if that line isn't straight at first, that's fine, because as you paint, as you go on, you can kind of straighten it out yourself. We're gonna add some sunny skin tone into our red in order to brighten it up. And that's gonna give us this final edge highlight. And we do want this to be a, a very fine edge highlight. We don't want this to cover over all of the pyro red that we painted in the previous step, but we want it to be on that very edge in order to kind of build up that color. We're also gonna use it to create some scratches, which is gonna help us to make some variation and just give a little bit more interest into this shield. Finally, for the shield on his chest, we're just taking bold titanium white and we're gonna edge highlight it. We're gonna put some scratches in here just to kind of break up that very flat white surface. For the gold, we're doing a very simple process here, starting with this rich gold. We're just gonna cover it all. Uh, this is watered down a little bit, so we're definitely gonna have to come over and do a second pass over most of these parts. But we're just laying down this rich gold onto all of our gold parts evenly. We have to be careful here on the shield because we don't want to paint over any of our red that we've already finished up. So just make sure that we take our time and we're patient with it. We're gonna use a watered down seppy ink. Now the trick is you do need to water this down. You can't just put this on straight out of the pot because it will be way too thick for what we want. But we're gonna water down this sepia ink and we're gonna put it on all of our gold parts. But especially we want it to really flow into the shadows or into the recesses. So don't be afraid to dampen your brush and go ahead and push it around and make sure you get it where you want it rather than like you would with a normal wash, just laying it down and letting it kind of travel wherever it wants to go. Use a little bit more control with this. We're gonna move straight up into our bright gold in order to build up those highlights. And we're not gonna cover everything back over here. We're not gonna edge highlight. It's kind of somewhere in between. We're gonna add a lot of color back into our gold. 
We want it to have a nice shine to it. These guys are dark angels. That gold should look regal. It should look very medieval knight. That's what we're kind of going for. You see here on this knee pad on that rim there, we want to make sure that we paint up that rim and we bring that brightness where the light's reflecting. You can kind of see on the other knee pad, you can already see where that reflection would lie just by how the light is hitting it. Now when it comes to these flat surfaces, uh, you get it on the pauldrons and on the scabbard case here at the bottom. It's a little bit trickier in order to get these gradients to work well without making them look choppy. But make sure you get those edges and then just kind of fill in a little bit of that flat part of that flat surface you're going for with a little bit of watered down bright gold. Our final highlight here is going to be Vallejo's silver. Now we're very focused in where we put this. We really want this to only be on corners and on edges that are going to reflect the most light. If we overdo it with this, we're going to create a weird effect. You're going to make it look really kind of fake looking, way too shiny. You see adding some scratches in here as we need to. but. Make sure you focus this and don't be too heavy handed and don't be going overboard with it. We're also going to use this to paint the eye lenses and then come back over all of the parts that we previously painted steel and highlight those up. Now we're actually doing this very similar to how we did the gold. We don't want to cover a lot of area, we just want to hit the brightest reflections. You can see it here on these chain links, just the difference it makes by putting those small reflections on there. We want to come over all of our rivets that we have throughout the armor, whether that's on the backpack, on the chest plate, here on the shield here on his chest. Make sure we hit all of these rivets. Like I said before, we want the sword to have a steel effect, but we want to give it a little bit more. So we're going to take this athermatic blue and we're just going to kind of glaze it on and we're glazing it on in stages and here's what I do on one side of the sword I make sure that the glaze is heavier up towards the top of the tip of the blade and then on the other side I make sure that the glaze is heavier on the hilt side as I build up these I focus more on more on one of the sides a lot like you would normally do with a power sword but just to give it some variation just to kind of break it up and make it look better and then we're going to take our silver that we had just used and we're going to come back over and we're going to hit these edges with it. And then also we're going to add some scratches. Now we want to take our time. We want to be very soft. We want to have a light touch whenever we do this. Uh, this paint will come off very easily. It flows very well. So you, you do need a light touch when working with this. You can see adding scratches in here just simply to add some more interest into the sword. We're going to water down our blood angels and we're just going to simply let it flow into the eye socket here covering up that lens and giving us a nice red glowing lens. Nothing fancy, nothing difficult. 
For our seals, I went very simple. Uh, mixed fuchsia with Indian shadow. The reason I did this is I didn't want a deep red color because it's already the color we're using for his shield. So we need a slightly different color to order in order to break it up and give us a variety. I left the parchment the way it is with the birch from when I airbrushed the model because that's normally how we do parchment is in birch. And then just using this black in order to create scribbles and lines to make it look like writing. And then we're finally gonna come back over the whole thing with the sepia ink and wash it all back down. Now, once again, if you just put it on just like that, that's how thick it's gonna be. We need to add some water and water it down in order for it to work well for us here. And here you go, finished product. These guys were a lot of fun. I'm excited to see them on the tabletop. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope if maybe you've struggled with the Deathwing kind of style that this is a way to do it easy and could help you out a lot with getting your Deathwing onto the table. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that it was entertaining. I hope that it was useful. Uh, I hope that it's something that is, has either inspired you or is giving you some ideas on how to paint your own models or maybe you've just simply enjoyed watching someone else paint. I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. Also, would love for you to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Um, that would be awesome. Thank you guys for all your support. We've got a lot more videos coming down the line. If you go back and look at our Space Marine Army project that we're doing, you can kind of see some of the units and some of the models that I'm working on. Um, if you have something specific that you'd like to see, drop me a line, let me know. I'd rather put together tutorials for units or models or games that you guys actually want to see painted. So thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later.